Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can model data with polynomials. And this lesson is going to require us to use some of the skills we've learned in previous lessons. So, especially for the last, the previous lesson where we learned about the finite difference theorem. So, if you haven't watched that video, uh, you want to make sure that you do so, so that way you'll know kind of one of the key components for this lesson. Another thing that we need to uh, review is some of these terms that I have up above me here. These are the different names that we have for polynomials based on their degree. So let's talk about these first. So remember, if we have a degree of 1, we would call that polynomial, we would say it's linear. If we have a degree of 2 for a polynomial, we would call that particular polynomial a quadratic. If the degree for a polynomial is 3, we would call that a cubic polynomial. If the degree is 4, we would call it a quartic polynomial. And lastly, if the degree is 5, we would call it a quintic polynomial. So those are some of the names of polynomials that you need to be familiar with um, for this lesson. And another thing, thing that you're going to need for this lesson is a TI-Inspire calculator or a similar uh, graphing calculator. Uh, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking some data. Because in the real world, a lot of times, if you're working for a company, um, if you own your own company, you're going to look at data. and You're not going to have an equation. And we're going to want to come up with an equation based on the data that we have because then we could use that data to make predictions in the, fu in the future. For example, if you're dealing with sales, you can look at the sales for the previous quarter or the previous uh, uh, year. And then you could use that data to come up with an equation. And then that equation you could use to make predictions. You can see where, where you'll be at a year from now or the next quarter or so. Um, so that is the importance of this. So uh, again, it's important that you watch that video for the previous lesson, the finite difference theorem, and also have your TI Inspire handy or your graphing calculator handy in order for us to be able to do this lesson. So let's start by looking at an example. Okay, this example here says there's a classic math problem that asks how many different handshakes are possible in a room with n people. For example, Three people would have three handshakes, and that's modeled here by this diagram. If you had three people, these two people would shake hands, these two would shake hands, and these two would shake hands. So there'd be a total of three handshakes there. Four people, however, would have six handshakes, because not only would these two people, and these two, and these two, and these two shake hands, but these two people that are across from each other would also shake hands. So there's a total of six handshakes, and this can be modeled by the following sequence. So five people would have 10 handshakes, six people would have 15, seven and 21, and so on. So we want to determine a formula, if a formula exists for this model, and if so, we want to find the formula. Because then we can figure out, well, let's say if we have a classroom of 30 students, we could figure out how many total different handshakes there would be from those 30 students. So let's first, let's figure out if it's possible to, for us to create a polynomial or a model for this situation. We do that by using that finite difference theorem. So I'm going to start out by finding the difference between each of these. So 6 minus 3 would be 3. 10 minus 6 is 4. 15 minus 10 is 5. And 21 minus 15 is 6. So we can see here that these have different differences. So this is not a first degree polynomial. So I do this again. 4 minus 3 is 1, 5 minus 4 is 1, and 6 minus 5 is 1. So the fact that my second row of differences um, are all the same means that this is a second degree polynomial. Or we could say it's a quadratic. So now, what we want to do is figure out what is that quadratic polynomial that would fit the data that are in our table. Now this is where we're going to use this top row of numbers. Previously, we have not used this top row of numbers, but at this point, this is where it's going to come in uh, handy, where we're going to use that information for finding that polynomial. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our graphing calculators, and we're going to go to a spreadsheet. Now, when we go to a spreadsheet, the first thing you want to do is label your columns. Now, go all the way up to that very first column that's got an A in it, and We'll use P to represent the number of people here. And then we're going to go to the next column, and we're going to use H to represent the number of handshakes. Now, in this column, we're going to put the number of people. Again, we're 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 people. And then in this column, we're going to write the number or type in the number of handshakes 
four of those different people from the table. So that would be 3, 6, 10, 15, and 21. Make sure you hit enter after typing in that last piece of data. So otherwise, it's not going to work out. So make sure you hit enter. So this should be what your screen looks like. So now we want to go to a um, screen where we're going to graph this data. So just to the right of our spreadsheet, we see this one here that looks like a histogram. It's a little pink button, pink icon. You want to go to that one. Now, this is not a scatter plot. This is just taking the data and just spewing it on the screen. We need to organize this data. So there's a couple ways you could do that. You could slide your finger on your touchpad here to move this cursor down to the bottom. Personally, I find that to be a pain. So I just like to hit the tab button. If you hit the tab button, this little screen pops up to ask us, well, what do you want on the x-axis? We want on the x-axis the number of people. And then we hit the tab button again. We want to put on our y-axis the number of handshakes because the handshakes are a dependent variable because our handshakes depend on the number of people involved. Now, even though this looks like a straight line, remember from our finite difference theorem, we found that this is a quadratic. So what we want to do is we want to fit a quadratic to this table. So what we're going to do now is go to the uh, menu button. We're going to analyze a graph. So menu number four. And then we're going to go to the regression. Now there's all these different kinds of regressions. Now look what we have here. We have our two different ones for lo show linear. If it's ever linear, we want to do the first one, mx plus b. Then we have quadratic, which is what we're going to use. But then we also have cubic and quartic. So those are the f uh, four common ones that we'll be using. But again, we're using a quadratic here. So I want to show quadratic. And so here's my equation. My equation is 0.5 times x squared plus negative 0.5x or minus 0.5x plus 0. So if we go back to our notes, our equation would be, we could say y equals... Again, it was 0.5x squared. Then we could just write minus 0.5x. If you want to put plus 0, you can, or we could just leave it like this. And this is what the equation that we would use to make predictions. So for example, let's say if we have a classroom of 30 people, and I want to figure out how many handshakes would take place in a, in a classroom of 30 people, here's what you would do. We would take 0.5 times 30 squared minus 0.5 times 30. And if we do that on our calculators, you want to make sure that you go to a calculator screen. So it would be 0 0.5 times 30 squared minus 0 0.5 times 30. And when you do that, you get 435. So in a classroom of 35 people, there would be a total of 435 handshakes. Okay, let's try another one together. Let's do one like this one. Here it says square tiles are used to construct a square patio as shown in the diagram. Find the polynomial function that relates the total number of tiles, T, to the number of rings, R. Let the center tile be ring 1. So my first step is in this one, they don't have a table created for us. They just have this diagram, so we need to create a table. So we're going to use R to represent the number of rings. We'll let T representing the total number of tiles. Now it's important for us to recognize that we're looking for the total number of tiles needed once we get to a certain ring. So um, I don't want to know just how many tiles I need in that ring. I want to know if I were to do just um, two rings, how many total tiles I would need. Or if I had four rings, how many total tiles I would, ring, or I would need. Or if we had maybe ten rings, if we had a really big patio and we wanted to do ten rings of tiles, how many total tiles I would need. So first off, in that first ring, we could see that we only have one tile. In the second ring, we're going to need a total of three, six, nine tiles. In the third ring, we would need one, two, three, four, five. So and there's one, two, three, four, five. So five times five is 25. So we need a total of 25 tiles now. In that fourth ring, I would have a total number of tiles of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 times 7 is 49. So here's our table.
So now again, we're going to use that finite difference theorem to find what the degree of the polynomial is, or if we can even create a polynomial here. 9 minus 1 is 8. 25 minus 9 is 16. And 49 minus 25 is 24. So we have our first set of differences are not equal. So we're going to do this again. 16 minus 8 is 8. 24 minus 16 is also 8. So this tells us, oops, this tells us it's a second degree polynomial. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did previously. So we're going to go to our graphing calculator, and we're going to go to a spreadsheet. By the way, let's say if we wanted to use the same variables, now we're not, we're going to use R and T, but there are times where we end up using the same variables that we have on a previous table. And watch what happens. Like let's say in the previous table where we used P and H. Let's say if in this one I want to use P, the letter P again. If I do, it's going to fill in the information that I already have in a previous table. Now we do not want that to happen. That can mess up our, our, our equation, it can mess up our graph. So if that happens, it's real simple. Just go to the home button. Say you want a new document. Say that you don't want to save it. Now I can create a spreadsheet. And if I wanted to do P or H, nothing's going to show up. But for this one, we don't want to use P. We're going to use R again for the number of rings. And we're going to use T to represent the number of tiles. So now as we fill this in, we would have one, two, three, and four rings. For our number of tiles, we would need one, nine, 25, and 49 tiles. Okay, so now go to a, uh, create a scatter plot. So again, you might have, have if you have another table open, you're going to have more dots than what I have here. That's okay, because our table will, or our when we go to label these axes, it'll pull out any information that we don't need. It'll include only the information we do need. So if you hit the tab button, we're going to use um, again R. So find R in your list. We're going to do that for your x-axis. Hit tab again. And this time we're going to use T for the number of tiles as our y-axis because the number of tiles depends on the number of rings we have. So now remember the process. Go to Menu, Analyze, Regression. And again, this is a second degree polynomial, so it's show quadratic. Now it's not always going to be quadratic, so don't get in the habit to think that it's always going to be the case. The next example we look at will not be a quadratic. But here's your equation. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So if you wanted to make a prediction of how many tiles you would need if there were 10 rings, we would just put 10 in for x, and that would give us our answer. Okay, I want you guys to try one on your own. We're going to skip that one. I want you guys to, let's look at this one. I might help you get this one set up. Because it says, a sculpture is to be placed in a concrete structure formed of square prisms as shown. Each prism is... 0.5 or half a foot tall. The top prism is 2 feet on each side. The next larger prism is 4 feet on each side. And the third prism is 6 feet on each side, and so on. So if you notice, it's going 2, 4, 6. So the next would be 8 by 8, then 10 by 10, and so on. We want to find the total volume of, a concre of concrete needed for n prisms. So let's look at how we would set up our table for this one. So let's use, so um, in the top row, let's use P or N for the number of prisms. And we'll use V to represent the volume. And this one will need a few more than what's shown in our diagram here. So the first prism... Our volume there is 2 by 2 by 0.5. Remember to find the volume, we take length times width times the height. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 0.5 is 2. So the volume there would be 2 uh, cubic units, two, or 2 cubic feet. Now, if we have two prisms, we want to take and find the total concrete needed. So we're going to find, right now, I'm going to find the volume just for this next step, basically, that we're adding. But then we're going to add to that the previous volume. So we would have 4 by 4 by 0.5. So 4 times 4 is 16 times a half would be 8. So that's just 8 more cubic feet. 
We're going to add that to the two other cubic feet. So a total of 10 cubic feet are needed if we just have two steps. If we have three, so now we're going to take 6 times 6, which is 36, times 0.5 would be 18. Add that to 10, you get 28. Now, to continue this, we're going to need another step here. Again, this next step is going to be 8 feet on each side. So 8 times 8 would be 64. Multiply that times the height of 0.5, 64 times or a half, is going to be 32. Add 32 to 28, and we get a total of 60. And then if we had another step, we'd have 10 feet on each side. So 10 times 10 is 100, times a half is 50. 50 plus 60 would be 110. Okay, now I want you guys to take it from here. So I want you guys to figure out what would be the degree for this polynomial. And then once you figure that out, I want you to create a scatter plot from the data that we just found in our table and find the re appropriate regression line that would fit that data. So I want you guys to go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. So you should have started by finding the first set of differences. When you do that, you should have gotten these set of numbers. Again, not the same numbers, so we have to move on. Find the next set of differences. Again, this time it's not a quadratic, unlike the other uh, two examples that we did. So we have to go on to the next set of differences. And now we have the same. So now we know that this is a degree 3, which also tells us that this is a cubic polynomial. So then you should have created a table and a scatter plot. And when you did your scatter plot and your line of regression, you might not have been able to see your entire equation, depending on your settings for your calculator. So I just want to show you how you can move a equation so you can see the whole thing. So first off, 0.6 repeating, hopefully you recognize that, that we could really write that as 2 thirds. So this will be the same as 2 thirds x cubed. And I can't see what's going on over here. So what I have to do is I have to move my cursor over my equation. And if I go over here to my, my calculator, if you hit control, you don't have to hold it down, but if you hit control and then the center button, what it's going to do is it's going to close your hand um, on your equation here. For me, it doesn't show it like it will for yours. Uh, but what it'll do is it'll show a closed fist, and then you can slide your finger around on your touchpad to be able to move this whole equation. So we can see that it'd be 2 thirds x cubed. And then what this means here, I don't know why this calculator does this sometimes, but this would be 1x squared. This 0.333 repeating and then 08x plus, this is basically 0. First off, this x, this coefficient here, we could say that that's approximately 1 third. So it would be 2 thirds x cubed plus 1x squared plus 1 third x. This is pretty much 0. So again, here's how you can write out your equation. Your equation would be y equals 2 thirds x cubed. And then we had plus 1x squared, which you can just write as plus x squared plus 1 third x. So now if we wanted to use this equation, we could. Like if we wanted to have a total. So x represents the number of prisms or the number of steps that we would have for this structure. If we wanted to have 10 steps, we could just put 10 in here to figure out how, many, how much cubic feet of concrete I would need, which is really helpful if you're in construction, because you don't want to order too much or too little or you'll have problems. So that's it. So that is all we need to know for this lesson. So good luck now as you work on your assignment.